At the end of a country road, we met our next guest, Dottie, and her delightful granddaughter, Leela. At the first stop of an internationally respected enterprise, Dottie had always wanted to visit. I'm here today with Dottie Simmons, and we're going to have some fun. What are we doing today, Dottie? We're going to see Cypress Grove cheese. Yes, we are. And why did you pick Cypress Grove cheese? Because it's amazing to me that I know they started this as a small goat cheese thing and decided to go for it. Yeah. And to me, that's just amazing to A, want to jump off that cliff for starters. Yeah. And just how do you make this amazing? I mean, everything about this fascinates me. The cheese itself, the how she does the business and goats. And goats. goats. Now you had goats once upon we a time? We had goats for 20 years. Okay. And then ah. we started a business uh -huh. and it was a soap business and it was growing and we came to Humboldt as back to the land homesteaders back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And we found the home of our heart yes. in the mountains. And when our business got to a place where if we could make it bigger, but we'd have to move to town, mm -hmm. or we could stay the same and just not be rich, staying the same was the no-brainer for us. That's we could, right. And yeah. she took it to that next level, which yes. is so incredible. And yeah. I wanted to see how that Hope. evolved well i think we're gonna have a great time because we're starting where <laughs> with goats <laughs> <laughs> right let's get this tour underway that sounds good to me we were lucky to be shown around the dairy by yanni rasmussen the cypress grove marketing manager and here we have hi i'm hi. yanni hi yanni Lila. nice to meet you Hello. yanni and welcome who are these guys and these are our baby goats that we have here at the cypress grove dairy and these babies are about two months old. They're weaned off milk and they are enjoying some of their total mixed ration. So they have a, a variety of things. They, they've got a lot of things to eat. Watch out. They do um, like to nibble on other things other than your the food. <laughs> the babies are the most important part. You cannot have a successful dairy without taking really good care of the goats from the moment they're born the most intensive part of this dairy. This is where it all starts, um, but it doesn't end here, of course, because these the, these babies are just two months old. And soon they'll be moved out to the, the pasture out there until they're ready to be bred. Because the whole goal of this dairy is to create a, a comfortable environment for the goats. If they're warm, if they're dry, if they're healthy, mm -hmm. they make great milk. So we have several loafing barns, and these are all very similar. They're, we move the goats around depending on what's going on. So we, and we built this dairy, the goal was to make it a model because we don't have a tradition of goat dairying in the US, but we are sure building demand for goat cheese and we need more milk. Now we're gonna go to the milking parlor and we, Bring the goats in here uh, twice a day, every day, 365 days a year. Cannot miss a day of milking. There's no milking happening right now, but you can see they've finished up for the day. They start early in the morning, about six in the morning. The equipment is really smart, and as soon as the milk stops flowing, they automatically release which is great. And then they drop off and then they funnel out and they get to go relax and have their breakfast in the barns. And <laughs> we treat the milk gently all the way across the process. People have these theories that goats are, they'll eat anything, but really they're very picky. And so they'll pick through the alfalfa just to eat the parts they want and leave the stems behind. So we have to do a lot of work to make sure they're um, getting everything they need, you know, like a child. Well, I think we're ready to go down to the creamery. What do you think? Shall we see what happens with all this wonderful milk? What comes next? Yeah. <laughs> we drove down to the creamery and first spoke with Mary Keene, the founder of Cypress Grove Cheese. One of the things that I've always been curious about, and I know that, that our guest is as well, is how in the world did you ever begin? So I had goats, I had four daughters, um, I made cheese because we were super poor. You know, we lost money for six years and it was, it was really hard because nobody liked goat cheese in the 80s. So you just believed in it and kept going? 
I had no choice, really. What do they say? Necessity is the mother of invention. Yes. I had four daughters to feed. I was a single mom. We have a joke in my family that I'm ready, fire, aim. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a huge risk taker. I don't yeah. see the risk, uh -huh. and, and that is helpful yeah. until I'm well into it, and then I'm committed. So Fantastic. I, I think if you design for the vision you want, you can then hold that vision and don't do what will take you off the vision. Right. So, Great. you know, we have our solar panels mm -hmm. now. We're, mm -hmm. We've been reducing water usage, all kinds of things for mm -hmm. sustainability. Yeah. We had a company picnic that I got to go to um, a couple days ago. And families are there. Oh, yes. And somebody said that they love this company because they look out for people. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I think you can hire for the heart and you can train for the job. Oh, that's you know, beautiful. and, yeah. and it yeah. makes a big difference. Yeah. And so you'll notice that everybody here is super wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Part of this time of life is giving back. You know, we've lived our life. A lot of people have helped us get where we are. Now it's our turn to help the next group get where they need to go. And then it was time to see how milk from well-tended happy goats was transformed into renowned cheeses that are savored around the globe. Before entering the creamery where the cheese is processed, we had to cover up from head to toe to prevent any contamination from the outside world. After a final disinfecting station, we were ready to see where the magic happened. So welcome to the Cypress Grove Creamery. <laughs> did you do you think it looks bigger in here than it did from the outside? It totally looks yeah. bigger. Look, this is huge. <laughs> and so our milk gets brought in on the complete other side of the wall, and so it just gets pasteurized and put right into those vats right there. And so it's all done right here. But since you're draining off waste, somewhere in there, rennet's added. Yep, rennet and cultures are added in those ripening tanks, and so that in there... And then it sits for Yep, eggs. it sits and ages, and then there's an agitator in there that kind of breaks it up sure. because it turns into like a yogurt-like texture while it's in there. All right, so this is the curd press room in here. And this is the beginning process. Oh, Besides it's the pasteurization so of the milk, <laughs> this is the beginning process of our cheese making. And so right now, the curd and the whey, they get pumped into these little curd press bags that are not little, they're very big, that you can see in here. And so there's a tube that is being pressed from the other side of the room where we have our ripening tanks. And it is putting all of the curd and the whey that's going into these bags right now. And this is where the separation process is happening. So you can see the whey is now separating from the curd that's in the curd bags under. And so you can see how much, like how uh, liquid like the texture of it is. And so how much whey really has to be pressed out of there for it to become usable curd. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it smells wonderful. This is really amazing. I know. Okay, so this is our mixing station. So this is where they take the ink salt, which we would add for Humboldt Fog. And then right now they're gonna be adding truffles, which is how we make our truffle tremor. But because you were in specifically interested in Humboldt Fog, we are taking you to the quintessential Humboldt Fog room. So over there, they're taking the fresh uh, chev out of the buckets that we just made and that we mixed. And so we took the curd, we added salt and enzymes to it. And so now that's what they're um, putting into the hopper right now. And so that's gonna go into this little extruder that's gonna shoot out the cheese as you can see it coming out. And each of those is just a half. It's half a humble fog. And so they come out in the perfect shape of half a wheel so that way they can go ahead and put the ash in the middle and that creates the ash line. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so how long does it have to sit after they do? So the cheese ages for two weeks, about 14 days. It's such a labor like intensive job too, as you can see that we just, Really, it still has that human touch to it, which is really incredible. They're just beautiful. We have three different types of coolers. We have a drying cooler, we have a ripening cooler, and we have a finishing cooler. So we'll go along and kind of explain what the different ones are. 
And so in here, you will see all of our Humble Fog Grandes. And so if you come in, you, we can walk in here and just take in that smell of the aged fresh cheese. And so you can see a little bit of mold is starting to develop on those, but these are still really new wheels. Uh, the drying cooler, we put cheeses in here, usually Humboldt Fog Grandes, when they need to lose a little bit of moisture. Sometimes they have too much moisture in them just because it's such a big wheel of cheese. We'll see what we have in here. Whoa! Oh, yes. oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! So you guys can, now you can, smell, you can even smell this one, it smells a lot different than the last one we were in. It has that very like, wow. high intensity. That's amazing. These are about halfway through their ripening process because they haven't been moved to the finishing cooler yet. So these are still kept at a temperature that allows for the mold to keep growing. And so uh, once we get down to the finishing coolers, you'll feel that the temperature drops and so that we try to stop the mold growth a little bit for it to go out into the world. The mold will never, never stop growing. The cheese is alive. After the cheese is wrapped, it is sent to packaging and then finally off to distribution. But that wasn't the end of our tour. No, the good folks of Cypress Grove surprised us with a delicious picnic. Well, I must say, we have had quite the tour. And what do you think? <laughs> this is fabulous. I mean, it's just amazing. This and that factory and the differences between it all and what amazing products you guys make. It's just incredible. Thanks so much for coming to see us. You bet. And it's incredible it's in Humboldt that all this yeah. is done. Yeah. So are you glad you checked it off your bucket list? Absolutely. <laughs> you can watch this episode and others online at keat.org. Hmm, what's on your bucket list? All right, shall we? <laughs> this might be my favorite.